Hey everybody, it's John here, your carnivore teacher alpha. Today we're breaking down one of the most misunderstood parts of nutrition, saturated fat. No seed oils, not polyunsaturated industrial sludge. I'm talking about the real, natural animal fats. Tallow, suet, butter fat, duck fat, lard, ghee, marrow fat. The fats that humans have eaten for thousands and thousands of years and thrived on. In this video, I'm going to teach you the actual names of the fatty acids inside these animals, what they do in the body, which animals contain which fats, and why they are not the villains we've been taught they are. Let's go. What is saturated fat, really? Saturated fats are fatty acids where all carbon bonds are saturated with hydrogen. This makes them more stable, less prone to oxidation, naturally solid or semi-solid at room temperature, ideal for high heat cooking, preferred structural fats for the body, cell membranes, hormones, insulation, brain tissue. Now, unlike unstable seed oils that break down into toxic aldehydes when heated, saturated fats remain chemically stable which is why traditional cultures cooked with tallow instead of soybean oil. Let's take a look at the major saturated animal fats. Butyric acid. It's a short chain saturated fat. It's butter, it's ghee, it's raw milk fat. It fuels your colon cells, it is anti-inflammatory, and it is gut healing, butyric acid. Then there's caproic acid, it's a short to medium chain, and that's milk fat. And it gives you rapid energy, and it's a ketone precursor. Caprylic acid is a medium chain, that's C8 that you see on MCT oils. It's dairy fat, it's goat, it's sheep fat. It converts quickly to ketones, and it is antimicrobial. Now, capric acid, which you sometimes see, on MCT oil as the C10. This is a medium chain as well, and that's also dairy, goat milk, and lamb fat. Rapid fuel supports mitochondrial function. Then there's lauric acid, that's C12. It's a medium chain, but at the far end. Dairy, animal milk, some in beef fat. It's antimicrobial, immune supporting. Now, muristic acid is a long chain fatty acid. That's found in beef tallow, mutton, dairy, and pork. This supports testosterone and cell signaling. Palmitic acid is really long, C16, and that's in beef tallow, duck, fat, eggs, and suet. It's a main structural fat in human body and breast milk. And then there's stearic acid, C18, that's a really long chain fatty acid, and that's found in beef fat, lamb fat, cocoa butter, and marrow. It's neutral on cholesterol, raises HDL, promotes fat burning. And then there's arachidic behenic acid, very long saturated fatty acid, and it's, it's found in trace amounts in animal fats, and it's good for membranes and nerve protection. Now, the key points for you to remember is human body fat is mainly palmitic and stearic acid, meaning the body prefers saturated fat as its storage and reserve fuel. So let's take a look at the different animal fats and their profiles. Beef tallow is a mixture of stearic, palmitic, and muristic. Very heat stable, ideal for deep frying, high in vitamin K2, if it's grass-fed. Then there's suet, which is the fat that comes from the kidney area. Highest stearic acid of all edible fats. It burns cleanly, highly ketogenic, and it's hard at room temperature. Now, bone marrow is stearic, palmitic, and some monounsaturated fats. Traditional for primal food, and it's highly nourishing. Butter and ghee, butyric acid, muristic acid, and palmitic and stearic acids. Butyric is gut and colon fuel, contains fat-soluble vitamins A, D, and K2. Do you hear the word butyric, butter? Do you hear the word but butyrate? That's where beta-hydroxybutyrate comes from. That's a ketone body. 
that's found in butter. Duck fat is palmitic and some unsaturated fats. It's softer fat. It's great for roasting, and chefs love this for flavor. Mm. Lard is pork fat. It's a mixture of saturated and monounsaturated fatty acids. It's slightly higher in polyunsaturated fatty acids due to modern feed, and pasture-raised lard is best, of course. Then there's lamb and mutton fat. That's stearic rich, very stable, structurally similar to beef tallow, but more pronounced flavor. The egg yolk fat is palmitic, stearic, and muristic fats. Also contain cholesterol, which is a precursor to hormones, vitamin D, and all the wonderful things that cholesterol provides for us. And dairy fat is butyric, capric, caprylic, and muristic fatty acids. Short chain fats, that means microbial plus immune benefits. Now, all the animal fats have a very small amount of polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats in them, which we absolutely do need, but we only need microscopic amounts. When we consume seed oils, a lot of polyunsaturated fatty acid, it's way out of balance. This is why saturated animal fats, like the ones I mentioned, are the healthiest. You're getting that good saturated fat with just the tiniest amount of mono and very little poly, which you do need a tiny bit of. Now, notice the pattern. The closer it is to the animal's body temperature, the softer the fat. Isn't that interesting? The colder the animal lives, the harder the fat. Nature designs the fat to match survival. I think that's pretty cool. So why saturated animal fat is not the villain? The older fear of saturated fat was based on weak 1950s epidemiology, not modern biochemistry. Modern research shows that saturated fat raises HDL, the good cholesterol. Stearic acid lowers LDL and increases fat burning, and LDL is not bad. <laughs> saturated fats improve testosterone, cell membrane integrity, immune function, and brain structure. Heart disease correlates strongly with seed oils, sugar, and processed carbs, not saturated fat. And heart disease correlates with oxidized LDL particles. We need to repeat that. The human body does not fear saturated fat. The human body is saturated fat, especially your brain, your cell membranes, your hormones, and your stored energy. So how do we use these in our diet? Cook meats in their own fat, tallow, lard, duck, fat, etc. Add butter or ghee to leaner meats so you get more fat in your diet. Use marrow or suet as a zero-carb energy source. Replace seed oils with animal fats entirely. Hello. Keep fats natural, unprocessed, unhydrogenated, and avoid factory-fed pork and chicken fats. They are too high in PUFAs, the polyunsaturated bad kind. The best fats for high heat cooking are beef tallow, suet, duck fat, and ghee. They're the best. The best added raw for nutrients is butter, marrow, and egg yolk. Let's do a quick comparison. Tallow is hard, it's good for frying and searing, and it has high ketone power. Suet is very hard. It's for topping and sauteing, and it's medium for ketosis. Ghee is a medium, high heat cooking, medium high for ketosis. Duck fat is soft. It's great for roasting and putting on meats, medium. Lard is soft, baking and frying, medium. And marrow fat is soft, and it's great for eating and blending. And all of these are great for ketosis. So when you hear someone say saturated fat causes heart disease, you'll now be able to say, which saturated fat, in what context, in what food, in what human, because biology is more complex than a slogan. And animal fats are not the enemy. They're the original human food. Personally, I enjoy butter, 
grass-fed, grass-finished butter with like everything. <laughs> I love my ghee. The flavor to me is nutty. I love ghee. And I've also learned that if you can eat the raw fat on the meat that comes with the meat without liquefying it, it's healthier. You're getting the the vitamins A, D, E, and K that are in the fat. And when you render it down into a liquid, a lot of that burns off. So try to eat the fat in its solid form as much as you can. It's healthiest. If you like this content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share this with friends and family, and leave me a question, a comment, or a suggestion, and I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my next video tomorrow, and have a great day.